Welcome back to the channel. This is a video for the steps on what to do in order to remove the radiator from a FX35. This one is a 2012 FX35 and it's all wheel drive. I actually did record a video going step by step like from a POV, but the camera was at a not so great angle so the video didn't come out like I wanted it to so I'm going back through to show you all the steps uh, just while holding the camera the radiator is already out but I'll still show you everything that needs to be done so to start with you're gonna have to go and drain the radiator so come under the vehicle this is on the passenger side Right under here, your radiator is going to be right there. You'll see a drain plug, which you'll need to remove with a Phillips head screwdriver. You're going to let that drain. Once that drains, you're going to want to move over to the passenger, I'm sorry, the driver's side over here. And you see that larger hose there gonna have to move the clip back so that you can remove that hose from the radiator coupling this hose here is the lower transmission fluid line you have to remove that clip so that you can pull that line off there's also another line that one there you want to remove that clip so you can pull that hose off as well moving back up to the top of the vehicle You'll see there are some brackets that need to be removed. This is all so that you can leave the AC condenser on while changing the radiator. So there's a bracket here. This metal bracket usually sits right behind the lip of the hood. You're gonna to need to remove a 10 millimeter bolt here, 10 millimeter bolt on the other side, six clips across the top. This has a wire attached to it. So you just flip it up like this. I have a hood mat that I just leave on the car that way it doesn't scratch up the paint. There's another bracket here, which always has to be removed no matter which method you're using. This bracket has two 10 millimeter bolts in the front. And there's also one 10 millimeter bolt holding the rear on for you too. After you do that, there's a wire here that's connected to the clips on the AC condenser. It's a cable. With this cable, if you unsnap this, you're gonna have a lot of play which you're going to need in order to move this AC condenser back far enough to get clearance for the radiator to be removed so there's a few other things that you're going to have to remove as well for the clearance of that I'm going to show you here So if we look down, you'll see the lines running from the AC condenser here. These are hard lines. There's a plastic bracket here. That plastic bracket holds those lines in place. There's one 10 millimeter bolt on the top. Once you are able to remove that 10 millimeter bolt, you want to go to the rear and push that bracket out from this side. You may need to use a tool. I used a flathead screwdriver and just gave it a push and it was able to be removed. Before all of this, you're going to have to remove your air boxes to make sure you have room to get to all of the hoses that we're going to need to remove. Both of the air boxes have a 10 millimeter bolt holding them on the side. That bolt is gonna to need to be removed. And there's a clip here 
that is a little tricky to remove. So instead of removing that clip, I just flip the air boxes over on both sides. That gives you enough room so you don't have to fully remove them. There's also a clamp that you're just gonna unscrew to actually pull this off of the hose. And that way you'll have enough room to complete this project. So back to the AC lines on this back side here, you'll see there's a bolt here, 10 millimeter bolt. It's actually right there under this clamp. I already removed the bolt. You can see there. And I just put it right back. So there, there's the bolt there. You have to remove that bolt so this line has some play to be able to move. There's also a clip that's right under here. So that white clip there, you're gonna need to remove this line from the clip. You can just pull it and it'll remove pretty easily. As far as Everything else, just gonna need to make sure that you have the clearance here with removing the radiator. So the couplings on the radiator on the driver's side do not come off. So you're gonna have to make sure that you have enough clearance with the AC condenser pushed back to be able to fit the couplings through this space here, out here, and be able to pull it out. There are some clips on the radiator that need to either be pushed in or removed. I cut mine off. I'm gonna show you those in a moment. I cut them off on both sides and removed them because it's an old radiator. And since I don't need that radiator anymore, there was no need to try to save the clips that were on it. Once those clips are removed, you're gonna start pulling the radiator towards you. Of course, you have to remove these locking clips on both sides for the radiator, and it's gonna push back. You also need to remove the top hose here. So this is your upper radiator hose. You have to remove this clamp. All right, so this is my old radiator. You can see on this side is where it had the blowout. Up here is the section I was talking about for the clips. So you'll see the clips here are broken off on both sides. These clips hold the AC condenser. So normally you have to push the clips in and slide the AC condenser out. I just broke these off. I cut them with some snips. Was able to pull the AC condenser up. And when I did that, I did put the locks back in for the radiator. That way it was able to hold the radiator in place while I pull the AC condenser up. The back side as you can see this is where you're gonna have some issues these couplings on the driver side these are the ones you need to make sure you're able to get clearance for to remove on the passenger side this is the one that was removed so that's not really an issue. And the drain plug itself is pretty easy to clear because on the passenger side, there are no hard lines. So the AC condenser is a bit more flexible on that side. You're gonna have to really work with it on the driver's side to get the clearance that you need to be able to get everything out with no problem. The main thing so as you can see here, like I said, the bracket that was on, that middle bracket there, 
that's what all of the damage came from right here pulling that radiator up which isn't an issue because it's an outgoing radiator but you do want to make sure you have this zip tied down or someone holding that back when you're installing your new radiator because you don't want your new radiator damaged from installing and having that bracket scratch it up like that the same with these bolts you want to remove those bolts if you put them back in the place that they need to go to not lose them as well you want to remove those when installing a new radiator just to make sure you have clearance and not damaging the radiator when it's being reinstalled that's pretty much it so again this project isn't very difficult to do but it does take a little while it takes some patience it's not something that you're going to do in 15 to 20 minutes so just be patient you could save quite a bit of money so the radiator is removed I do have the new radiator, which I will put in the description for the model number and the type. Uh, the type company that makes it is Denso. The Denso was a reasonable price. It wasn't the lowest price that I saw. It was about a little over $200. This is the end of this video. Hopefully this will help someone. So hopefully you like this video. If you did like this video, Please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the bell so you can receive the notifications when I upload new videos. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Share this video. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.